goes from here to here to here. Humans put footprints on Mars. What that first billion years of the universe was like. Throughout history, the allure of astronomy has captivated the human mind. From ancient stargazing to modern exploration, the James Webb Space Telescope stands as the pinnacle of space observatories. But recently, Neil deGrasse Tyson breaks silence on the James Webb Telescope. What was all that about? And will it reshape history? To know more, stay till the very end of the video. Exploration Arena What is the fuss about the James Webb Space Telescope? The James Webb Space Telescope not only unravels the enigmas of our solar system, but also delves into the origins of the cosmos and distant planets orbiting alien stars. Neil deGrasse Tyson highlights its transformative power, shedding new light on familiar cosmic elements by peering into the deep past. The scientific community, in a state of awe, joyfully explores the far reaches of time, unearthing astonishing revelations about our cosmic history. Initial Year Exploration in its inaugural year, the James Webb Space Telescope astounded us with a captivating array of images, marking just the beginning of its mission. Neil deGrasse Tyson underscores the telescope's unique focus on seeking out infrared light, emphasizing a crucial rationale behind its construction. He posits that, on Earth, nothing could capture high-quality data from the early cosmos due to a gap in our telescopic space-time continuum. This gap arises because ultraviolet light emitted during the birth of stars and galaxies undergoes a transformation into longer wavelengths as it traverses expanding space since the Big Bang. By the time these light waves reach us, they manifest as infrared, a spectrum web is adept at capturing. The telescope has not only unveiled galaxies formed over 13 billion years ago, but has also offered fresh insights into planets within our solar system. Contemplating the observation of celestial phenomena from epochs long past challenges our understanding, prompting us to grapple with the enormity of time in the cosmic theater. If it took their light millions or billions of years to reach us, would they still be here? Perfect illustration Neil deGrasse Tyson offers a poignant perspective on astronomers' nonchalance toward the existence of distant celestial objects, attributing it to the limited impact of these astronomical phenomena on human lives within the span of a few decades. He highlights that, thanks to specialized telescopes, astronomers can observe stars that underwent cataclysmic events thousands or millions of years ago. Tyson emphasizes the practicality of this approach as it allows astronomers to study stars conveniently. The stars and planets visible in our night sky, according to Tyson, are echoes of celestial entities that may or may not exist in their present state. Illustrating this, he references the Ro Ofuyuki Cloud Complex, a nearby stellar nursery hosting approximately 50 newborn stars, each comparable in size to our sun or smaller. These celestial bodies emerge when the cooling gas and dust within the cloud reached a critical point, initiating the gravitational forces that power stellar fusion processes. Images Analysis Specifically, the recent images hold severe importance JWST's July images of the stellar nursery showcase the youngest stars in the dark regions, while on the upper and lower right sides show stars expand into existence, marked by jets of reddish-hued hydrogen molecules. In the long wavelength infrared light, certain stars in the JWST image exhibit dusty disks akin to the ones surrounding our young sun when planets form from such disks. Around 4.6 billion years ago, our sun emerged from a stellar nursery, and Rho Ophiuchi, roughly 390 light years away, stands as the nearest star nursery to Earth, devoid of intervening stars. JWST, strategically positioned, observed the early solar system stages, capturing the potential growth of young stars into massive sun-like entities. Notably, a young star surrounded by glowing columns in the image hints at its eventual growth, comparable to our sun's mass. The H211 jets, enclosed within the dust cloud, enveloping the star and situated about 1,000 light years away from Earth, result from newborn star's gas emissions colliding with neighboring dust at supersonic speeds, rendering these columns visible. JWST's infrared photos of the H211 jets boast unprecedented clarity, up to 10 times sharper than any previous observations of H211. Possible Explanation the observed ripples around the center of the outflows from H211 
may find a plausible explanation in the hypothesis that H211 is not a solitary star, but rather a binary system with two young stars orbiting each other. In another intriguing discovery, the dust disk around a dwarf red star, D235006, in the Orion Bar, located deep in the Orion Nebula, offers essential ingredients for the genesis of life. Though the red star itself is too small to be visible in the JWST's June image of the nebula, it endures extreme conditions, reminiscent of our young sun. JWST detected a carbon-hydrogen complex in the red star's disk, indicating that life-supporting molecules could withstand the intense radiation within stellar nurseries, contrary to previous beliefs that such radiation would destroy organic molecules. The radiation, rather than being detrimental, might serve as an energy source for generating the foundational molecules of life. The Heart of the Crab Peering into the Heart of the Crab Nebula, a JWST photograph in October reveals a tiny bright spot near the center, a remnant of a supernova that lit up Earth's sky in 1054. This dot is an exceptionally dense neutron star. As it rotates, the neutron star's potent magnetic field appears to stir up a hazy cloud. The ethereal white streaks in the image are not smoke, but radiation generated when electrons are accelerated to nearly the speed of light by the magnetic fields of the neutron star. Curving white rows in the nebula's compact structure mark the magnetic field lines. While the precise circumstances of the Crab Nebula's formation remain mysterious, astronomers are gaining insights into its history through data collected by JWST's infrared cameras and other observatories. This information enhances our understanding of the composition and behavior of celestial objects at various light wavelengths. Cassiopeia A In the vast array of objects within the Milky Way, Cassiopeia A stands out as one of the most scrutinized supernova remnants across various wavelengths. Yet, even in the shattered remnants of this star, mysteries persist. The James Webb Space Telescope unveils a new image of the Cassiopeia A supernova remnant resembling a brilliant round ornament fitting for the festive season. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, in collaboration with NASA, unveils the inaugural White House Advent Calendar for the 2023 Christmas season, celebrating the magic, wonder, and joy of the holidays amid abundant lights. With a near-infrared camera on web, this image provides an unprecedented level of detail on the star explosion. The close-up view captured at these wavelengths exposes intricate features of the star's exploding shell as it collides with the surrounding gas that the star had been shedding. In the realm of supernova remnants, a multi-wavelength image of the Cassiopeia A has been meticulously assembled over the years, utilizing both ground-based and space-based telescopes, including the Chandra X-ray Observatory, the Hubble Space Telescope, and the now-retired Spitzer Space Telescope, all operated by NASA. New Chapter In April 2023, a new phase in the exploration of Cassiopeia A commenced with the Webb Space Telescope's mid-infrared instrument, unveiling previously unseen structures within the inner shell of the supernova remnant. However, the latest near-cam image doesn't display certain characteristics visible in previous mid-infrared instrument images, leading astronomers to investigate this anomaly. As infrared light is imperceptible to the human eye, scientists convert it to the visible light spectrum, assigning various colors to near-cam filters. Despite appearing initially dull, the colors in the recent web image indicate distinct internal processes within Cassiopeia A when compared to the mid-infrared instrument image. The inner shell of the supernova remnant is revealed in clusters of light pink and orange, capturing the emissions from sulfur, oxygen, argon, and neon gas knots as minuscule as a human hair. Embedded within this gas are a combination of dust and molecules that will eventually coalesce to form new stars and planetary systems. Despite Webb's exceptional sensitivity, some debris filaments remain too diminutive to be resolved, measuring about 100 astronomical units, which is smaller than 10 billion miles. In contrast, Cassiopeia A spans a colossal 60 trillion miles in its entirety. Denny Milosovljevic a researcher from Purdue University characterizes the explosion as leaving behind completely shattered remnants akin to tiny shards of glass elucidated by the high resolution of NARCAM. Solving Details 
The newfound ability to discern intricate details is providing groundbreaking insights into the explosive dynamics of Cassiopeia A. In a remarkable revelation, years of research into the star's interior cavity and outer shell, previously appearing strangely colorless, are now transformed by Webb's new near-infrared image with mid-infrared vision. The once dark red and orange hues of the outer edges of the primary inner shell seen in the mid-infrared instrument picture now resemble the smoke from a bonfire. As the supernova blast wave collides with circumstellar material, the dust within the star material emits a glow in the mid-infrared, although it remains too cold to be directly observed. At near-infrared wavelengths, synchrotron radiation, believed to be responsible for the white hue, emerges. This radiation, extending across the electromagnetic spectrum, results from particles with charges whirling around lines of magnetic fields at tremendous speeds. Furthermore, the bubble-like exteriors of the lower half of the interior cavity reveal synchrotron radiation. Notably, the green light loop in Cassiopeia A's central chamber, affectionately dubbed the Green Monster by the study team, remains invisible in the near-infrared perspective. The integration of near- and mid-infrared observations is providing a multifaceted understanding of Cassiopeia A's complex post-supernova environment. New Record Discoveries Regardless of all the astonishing findings, a new record holder has been discovered by astronomers employing the James Webb Space Telescope in their search for the tiniest brown dwarf. This object weighs only three to four times Jupiter's mass. The boundary between stars and planets is crossed by objects known as brown dwarfs. They undergo stellar formation and eventually get so dense that they collapse due to their own gravity, but they never attain the critical mass and temperature required to fuse hydrogen and become stars. Brown dwarfs can range in mass from a few times that of Jupiter to a few times that of large planets on the lower end of the spectrum. The question of what the small stars are is a fundamental one that appears in all astronomy textbooks, specifically that it is the question that the authors of the study, Kevin Lumen from Penn State, are aiming to address. The star cluster IC348, situated around 1,000 light years distant in the Perseus star forming region, was the target of Lumen and ALV Deola's research in order to identify this newly discovered brown dwarf. That's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and press the bell icon for all future updates. See you next time.